From set pieces to attacking play to tactical approach, it feels different this year for Arsenal. Sometimes that feels good, sometimes that feels bad. And we're going to look at exactly what changes Arsenal have made to facilitate a genuine title race this season. And it's not even possible to call me crazy for saying that. So Arsenal have made one subtle change to their set pieces in recent weeks, and it has upped their title ambitions no end. Let me show you what I mean. So last season, they scored 15 set piece goals, which made up 17% of their total goals. And I, this, that's class, right? But this season, they've already scored 16 from set pieces. You know, we're you know, there's a long way to go for the rest of the season. And it's the most in the league so far. And this accounts, are you ready? For 30% of their total goals this season. But what is the big change? What have they changed and why is it so important? Well, last season, the corners rotated between Saka, Odegaard and Trossard. It worked at times, but the unexpected recent change giving Declan Rice set piece duties, it has elevated them to a higher level. And no one seems to have any answers for it. It seems. So this freeze frame is from the eighth minute and should have been a big warning for West Ham, but they paid no attention to it. And well, they paid the price for it. Now, the reason for this is overloads and where they take place. Now, West Ham, of course, are defending in a zonal formation, as you can see here. We've got the two boys here. And in particular, they're focusing on the six yard line. They're trying to make sure that they're protecting that six yard line with as much volume as possible, whilst also trying to protect the goalie. But the plan from Arsenal was to clearly target the back post. As you can see with the players that they've got at the back stick here, ready to attack that back post. And with Declan Rice on set pieces, that was vindicated through his ability to, to put the ball accurately and consistently in a desired area, which is an interesting thing for him to go and do because you're actually missing out on another six foot, what is he, two a player in that penalty area, but the quality has been there and it's something they've clearly worked on. And it just goes to show how complete Declan Rice is. An important thing to say here is that Arsenal deployed this very same tactic when they set up the corners on the other side as well. And you actually see it with a lot more clarity in this one. Again, the, the, the zonal structure of uh, West Ham in terms of their lines and protecting the, the back line, they've got an understanding of who they've got. But the overload, again, from Arsenal, so clear that they're going to the back stick. One crucial factor actually here, which you might not have spotted straight off the bat, is Declan Rice isn't actually taking this corner. It's Saka taking this one. Obviously, you can see him out here. And the reason for that is for the tactic itself. Again, of course, they're all at the back stick here. But importantly, it's about in-swinging corners. And in particular, that shift maybe away from short corners to really putting it on the goalkeeper. It's something we've noticed recently and something we could dive into. So let's know. Let's go for 3,000 likes on this and we'll go and do something like that, which is a bit in the weeds but if you enjoy it we'll do it but after 31 minutes West Ham still didn't learn their lessons and this time it didn't go unpunished if we move it on one more you can see exactly that that cross into the back stick and these set pieces they shouldn't just be isolated as big moments in this individual match because the amount of work that Arsenal have done to improve their corners it's something that we, I think it's going to overarch their season and look the proof is in the pudding with the stat that we showed you earlier on 30 percent nearly a third now listen up because they're attacking play has come under a lot of scrutiny recently uh, myself as well it's felt a bit slow a bit clunky and, and question marks over their ability to score goals has been questioned but now Arsenal have the same goal difference as Manchester City and that is a really important thing to focus on because okay maybe it's not the same amount of goals but that overall control that we're seeing from Arsenal and the changes that Arteta is making the team are taking it up a notch and because of this, Arsenal have scored already 16 Premier League goals in four games. 16 Premier League goals in four games. And this moment from the game is key in understanding why. It's a theme that has been running throughout this video and it's going to continue to do so. It's that Arsenal do their homework. This doesn't just apply to their game against West Ham. It applies to every single team that they're facing and will face from now until the end of the season. And it's what gives them a chance. Let me show you why. Because this is West Ham's starting eleven from the game. And it's also the same team that started against Manchester United. So in this, Arteta has seen something that many, I think, would have missed. And I think, look, whatever your feelings over Arteta, he's awesome. He's such a good manager. And his team are so smart. And you can see that sort of 
crystallization of kind of how powerful they are as a side in terms of the intelligence with and without the ball. And they have answers. We'll come back to that. But in this Arteta has been, he's seen something that many would have missed. And the key lies in Ben Johnson. So against Manchester United, he started on the right. He started on the left here. But the truth is that he was going to be key for Arsenal, regardless of which side he started on. And if we show you the average positions from Arsenal, that will explain what we mean by the keyness if that's even a word, of Ben Johnson. Because Arteta knew that whatever side Johnson started on, that he was always going to be in the team to help in wide spaces. So this simply meant that Arsenal were able to focus their attacks down Johnson's side because of how deep West Ham was sitting on their left. It effectively meant that even if Arsenal did attack too aggressively, there's no chance West Ham are really going to offer any threat down that same side, which allows Arsenal then to sort of cheat somewhat down that right-hand side, as you can see from Saka here. And if we show you the average positions of Ben Johnson playing in midfield, but over on that left-hand side looking to help out. And if Johnson didn't start on the left, it would have been kudos. This would have just allowed Arsenal to overload the right-hand side with Kudos not tracking back as often uh, either way. So it was always going to work, and Arteta knew that. And that's where this freeze frame really paints a picture, because on the right-hand side, there was just a real source of dominance for there. Ben Johnson really struggling with the three of Saka, Odegaard, and Ben White in particular. And this was sort of shades of what we've seen in the past. You know, being able to sort of really push Saka up, high, wide, and look to get that dominance. And Odegaard was superb throughout the game as well. But it was because of a focus on that right-hand side. And once again, Arsenal doing their homework. Now, before we look at the goals, I absolutely love this from Saka. Saka picks up the ball and drives into a central position. That means that Emerson Palmieri, who's right beside him, has to kind of sort of go and with him. And it manipulates West Ham because what it does is it leaves a lot of space out on this right-hand side, which Ben White later in the game actually drives down this side to great effect. But more importantly than that, it's kind of playing games with Emerson Palmieri, who wants to go and get tight, but he's also going to be a little bit concerned about going into a central area because the space that he vacates. But also an understanding of, is Saka always going to go inside or is he going to go outside? It's playing with his mind a little bit, and we see that a little bit later on. It's things like this that Arsenal did throughout the match to manipulate West Ham and exploit them, but this is not just a sort of West Ham-specific thing. Remember that. Now for the goals and where the previous piece of play, try and say that three times, became so crucial. So we were speaking about those seeds of doubt for Emerson Palmieri, and this is a great example. This is the fifth goal. So you can see Saka here gets into a new space in between the lines. And look, it's a beautiful ball outside of the boot from Odegaard. The relationship between these two was back on form in this one. And yes, maybe it's a little bit easy. But for someone like Emerson Palmieri, it's very difficult. Because first of all, right underneath me, you can see, well, you can't see, um, Ben White is there. So he's kind of concerned about going over to Ben White. But also with Saka, he's already seen him move into that central area. And he also knows that he, that is that kind of his man. So he doesn't know what to do. And if we move it on one, we'll see the fruits of that. Because as he then gets the ball, and it's a great pass from Odegaard, it's one where Palmieri doesn't know if you get tight or not. He doesn't do either. And actually, Saka, who I know a lot of people talk about him cutting inside a lot of the time, it comes from that manipulation earlier in the game of knowing, oh, is he going to go this way or that way? And it's one where Palmieri doesn't know what to do in those half spaces, and he gets himself a pow, pow, pow goal. It's a, a tactical maturity that we are seeing in this Arsenal side. That, again, I think is why we're struggling to kind of not enjoy it, but appreciate it. Because it is a ruthlessness and it is a manipulation that is just not as free-flowing as we've previously seen. But that ruthlessness is there and is building. And momentum is an interesting one. Jürgen Klopp was talking about this in his post-match press conference this week, where momentum is something that is kind of changing all the time or being created all the time. And so Arsenal need to continue. They need to keep winning games. But that victory against Liverpool and then backing that up with a ruthless victory against West Ham and two teams that play very, very differently makes a massive, massive change to the mentality of this team and allows them to start to build something. Something that Arsenal fans are allowed to be excited about. Right, listen up, because I need you to do one thing for me. I want you to completely forget everything I've just said about the attack. Because this is what makes Arsenal so good this season. And it's nothing to do with the West Ham game. Because these average positions are nothing like the ones against Liverpool. 
And it's part of Arteta's plan. And it's why he has multiple answers this season. When maybe he didn't last year. Because this Arsenal side is adaptable. Their average positions here display a 4-4-2 rather than the 4-3-3 that they displayed more so against West Ham. And this is what it means for Arsenal. This freeze frame from the Liverpool match shows a totally different approach from Arsenal where they look to exploit space and specifically down the left-hand side. And this was to sort of cope and to hurt a Liverpool side that plays a very high line. Now, Arsenal may play slightly different against better quality opposition, but the important thing to remember is that they're doing both styles to the same efficiency and they've got answers for everyone. The decision to play Kai Havertz in this game, again, was a good decision from Arsenal due to his off-the-ball work rate as well as his link play in transition. And then you have this. The 4-4-2 out of possession against Liverpool is something that I think a lot of people didn't expect in particular, I don't even think Jurgen Klopp expected it when we talk about Jorginho and Declan Rice as that double pivot. And Arteta has been one step ahead in the league in 2024. If you want another example of why Arsenal are different this season and how Arteta does his homework, there is a video literally above my head talking about Arsenal being different this year from four months ago, I think, something like that. So go check that out.